and go! Alright, Ninetales back to bring you a little bit more talking about the game we are watching. Sorry that, again, sorry, I just want to apologize that everything that was recorded today got super messed up. I think this is actually also still a Losers Round 3 match, and the next one's going to be Losers 70s or something. Anyways, um, we got Cho versus Tommy. Cho has taken the lead, and Tommy is struggling to find a kill on him. Although this might be it. Oh wow, very good recovery on Chiro's part. He is not afraid to back way out when Sheik's coming out after him. Oh, and not it. Escapes with the up jump. The up jump. <laughs> um, but you know, that's what that was the right thing to do with that situation. Otherwise it was up air or vanish mix up with a spot dodge and you don't want to do that. So jumping away, probably the smart thing to do. Uses a fireball to cover his edge grab. Very nice. And goes in for the goes in for the grab after getting away from the jab. He was waiting for that jab finisher to come out so he could punish that. But Tommy was just keeping it going, so he just he just stepped back and said, Alright, well it's gonna have to end soon. Tommy ended it, got the punish. Oh, good back air on Tommy's part. That was a nice Oh my god, that bouncing fish was sick. Bouncing Fish, directly where Chiro was going to be, it was off the screen at the moment that he started it, so it was pretty good. But, but Chiro's location was off the screen, so he did a, he made a really nice read on Chiro's movement. Oh, going, trying to go for some cheesy, off-the-edge, stage spiky type stuff. Chiro's not having it yet, but Tommy does feel, it does feel like Tommy has the momentum right now. You know, Chiro had the lead, but all the damage in the last 20, 40 seconds has been Tommy, ever since he got that kill. <clears throat> Alright, Chiro finally getting in an advantage state. Now he's the one trying to juggle, and gets a grab. Sets up an edge guard, misses the spike. Just went for it, just all like YOLO, he just like YOLO'd that fair. Oh, I thought that was going to be a grab. Nice. Oh, whoa! I'm surprised that uh, Tommy missed that punish, actually. Oh, that might be it. That's game one going to Churro. We're going to edit that if we can. Like I said, the stream is just a super huge pain to edit today. Uh, so, a lot of people have just sort of dropped the ball on it in general, and I'm sorry for that. Churro up a game. 
Let's see what happens in the next game. We got some exciting stuff. We got some potential counter picks in terms of stages and characters. Both these characters, both these players, I mean, both these players do have non tournament character. or not, sorry, they do have other tournament characters they like to pull out sometimes. Churro actually pulled out his Mac on me earlier and ended it with a KO punch that I am a little salty about still. A little bit. It was good though. It was well executed, so I'll have to live with it. Tommy sometimes plays Mies, however, uh, we have slightly more restrictive rules on how Mies have to be set up, and I think he that... Actually, I think there's an official Salem rule that Tommy can't play Mies in Salem. He asked for it. So maybe, uh, maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Maybe he'll just be sheep this whole time. At, at either rate, uh, we've got uh, this game starting off, and the person with the lead is now Tommy by a lot. This is his uh, edge guard opportunity, and then Shiro picks it up. That dash attack is gross at the edge like that. Uh, especially on this stage, it actually has the ability to stage spike people who are hanging if, it, if they're still hanging when it hits them. So that's pretty crazy. Uh, good forward smash by Tommy. That's not a move you see Sheik's pull out very much. Not good ones anyways, so... Caught Churro a little off guard. Good air dodge through the bouncing fish. Churro fighting to try to catch up a little bit. He did a good job of not dying during the last game, so that's what he needs to do again. No. Wow, once again, the forward smash working out, and that was an interesting use of it, too. He sort of backed off just a second and then turned around and forward smashed, and it was almost like a read, like he knew that Cho was about to go for the grab, so he did it, and it worked. <laughs> All right. Ooh, this game looking a lot different than the last one. Now Tommy's sort of running away with the lead. Churro can't find his kill. Oh, good fair. Beats out the down smash. Churro is charging, hoping for a roll. All right, there we go. Churro getting some grabs. Interesting trade. Not the best up B, but he tried. A for effort, I guess. Oh, and there's that forward smash. Churro does even up the stock count at a 59% disadvantage. Quickly a 66 one. Now, Churro. Whoa! It's hard to say. There's not a whole lot of momentum. The game slowed. The game pace is slowed down a little bit. Oh, wow! Nice roll read. Oh, that back air string. That was like Sheik's medicine against Sheik. Like, the way those back airs happened, that looks like a Sheik doing a fair string. That was crazy. Great move by Churro. He actually made the stocks even, or the percent even for a moment there. And it more or less is in the grand scheme of things. Especially when you consider that Sheik kills way worse than Mario, and is lighter than Mario too. Those two things combined mean that Churro's almost in the advantage. Or, no, he's definitely in the advantage. Percents up for him. Oh. And needles catch Churro off guard a little bit. He just starts charging a forward smash and they get him. Oh. Forward throw to up air. Not gonna kill yet. Battlefield does have a slightly higher ceiling than most stages. A lot of people uh I don't know how many people actually know that. I'm I'm always blown away by the number of people who say Dreamland has a low ceiling. Dreamland has the exact same blast zones as Battlefield, except its ceiling is 1% lower, and Battlefield has one of the higher ceilings in the game. So it's like, okay, it's lower than Battlefield, but like, insignificantly, and then at the same time, ooh, good dash attack to fair. I'm, I'm, I'm going off on stages here, but you know, Battlefield has a high ceiling, so up moves don't kill as early here. And a back throw? Nope, that doesn't happen. Oh, that grenade directly on top of him. That looks so cool. It actually looked like his shield was an attack. It's very really interesting. Yeah, if that back throw had come out, I think Shiro could have ended it right there. I think he pummeled a little too much. Oh, that up air almost killed too. This game's getting intense. Oh, and he ran into the vanish. Wow. I think that I think that that second pummel should have been the back throw, and that would have been the game for Churro. But he, 
didn't do that. Tommy capitalized. And now this set is 1 1. Let's see what happens in game three. Yeah, given the fact that Sheik's a pretty light character, there was like over 120% damage on both characters, so we're working with very high rage, very high, very definite kill percents, and Mario had his back to the edge of the stage. I'm pretty sure a back throw, the pummels were unnecessary, the back throw would have just killed. Like, you didn't even need to do one pummel, you know? To top off the situation at the venue today, I'm literally sitting on the ground right now. There are no chairs. The game star somewhere in Washington or something took all our chairs like a dingus. North Salem. There's a North Salem game star and it took all our chairs. There's a North Salem game star and it took all our chairs. There's just a North part of Salem. All right, game three, we are going back to the exact same place and character sets we've had every game so far. Tommy taking the lead in percent, already a third of the way to 100%, and further, halfway down. Make that two-thirds of the way. Fractions. Uh, a kind of interesting nair exchange. Both characters jumped up, did a nair, and then slowly brought the nair backwards, leaving the extended hitbox out to try to catch the other person. Shiro started his second, so he actually got the hit, but it was funny. I thought it was funny. I was I was laughing a little inside. Ooh, similar situation to the last game. Tommy backs up a little bit, then turns around and does a forward smash, and it gets Churro. Oh, Churro escapes the bouncing fish by going high. Slightly different mix-up because he's mostly been going low with Mario. And there you go. Saw this jump. Sure knows how to recover. Tommy gets the ledge jump to back air. Can Churro make it? He does. Wow. Tommy really put it on the edge guard pressure though. Churro's struggling. Churro hasn't been on the center of the stage in a while. And finally he goes for a landing dare. Hits the platform. Tommy was prepared with a sweet spot up smash on those battlefield platforms. This game is looking good for Tommy at the moment. Getting some chic stuff. You, it's always bad to lose your first stock to a chic before taking that chic stock because chic. Sheik works best at low percents, you know? That's when Sheik does everything and it's just like, oh my god, these strings, you know? Oh wow, that landing fair. That was really... Every time Mario does fair, it's so YOLO. Oh, nice back air on Chiro's part. Of course, we're still dealing with the Sheik, so... Ooh, and Chiro's making the mistake of thinking you could, you should do something against the Vanish. You gotta really respect that move, and I've learned that lesson plenty of times the hard way. But unlike a lot of characters, there's really no point in going down there to challenge that move since it just kills. Alright, good dash attack, edge guard by Churro. Now Churro's the one trying to put up a big fight. Oh, but he gets stage spiked by the Vanish. Tommy actually wins that one 2-0. I mean, two stock. He wins that one with two stocks. And he wins the set 2-1. Good job to both players. Pretty interesting stuff.